Hey there, so I know what you're thinking, uh, there's a wrestling video, there's like a, a sappy video, where's all the movie videos at? Well, here we go. My favorite company of this year, uh, was actually Scream Factory. I think they put out the most quality releases, uh, with the best value. So, I'm going to give you my top Scream Factory releases of 2013. But before I did that, I do that, uh, I'm going to let you know which ones didn't quite make the list, but there's still great movies that I think everybody should have. And let's start with our honorable mentions. And those would be Swamp Thing. Not on Blu-ray. Oh, well, yeah, on Blu-ray, but not on cut totally. So uh, you don't get to see... Uh, you don't get to see her, uh, Agent Barbeau, in the way that uh, you may want to see Agent Barbeau because that's only in the cut that got taken off the shelves. But a great, fun film by Wes Craven. Really enjoyed it. Crawl Space. It's Kinski. It's Schmoller. It has a great little uh, short film called Please Kill Mr. Kinski. It's a must-have. It didn't quite make the list, but it is a great film. Terror Vision and the Video Dead. Almost made the list. It's an amazing film. Uh, well, films. And they're just really fun films. Not a, you know, this is not Criterion. This is fun, popcorny stuff that you sit back, that you probably watched and, and rented because the covers were cool back in the day. Next up was one that actually had a cool cover back in the day, but it was actually a really good movie. So when you rented it, you got a good surprise. And that movie was Prison. Prison is a great movie, uh, just didn't quite make the list. It's one of Rainier Harlan's early films. You know, this is pre uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4. This is pre uh, his Die Hard Days. This is just a really cool movie, and this is pre, uh, uh, I guess, Gina Davison. Now the top ten Scream Factories. And uh, I said I wasn't going to put them in order, but I, I kind of am. And the uh, ones, the two that I don't have here because I didn't pick them up yet are the ones I'm going to mention first and uh, so going in at number 10 we have uh, Body Bags John Carpenter classic film a lot of director cameos in this one here the only reason it's not in my collection right now is because it never came to uh, to this island yet as of the end of 2013 2014 it's the only reason I never bagged my better half to get it for me haven't seen it in stores uh, next up is Prince of Darkness. Almost got it. Uh, it actually went for a crawl space because crawl space was harder to get than Prince of Darkness. There was lots of copies of Prince of Darkness, but Prince of Darkness movie it has a lot of deep sentimental value to me. It's one of the first horror movies I saw with my dad in the theater, and uh, great film. So that's number nine, right? Number eight is The Howling coming in with a, uh, an amazing box cover art that was so good that I had the choice between the Blu-ray and the DVD and yes, I chose the DVD just because I wanted the art looking like this so while I get the Blu-ray down the road, I don't know, maybe but this is really incredible artwork uh, the film is great, they actually do a featurette that talks about every Howling movie ever made in the entire franchise, from this one right here from the first one, right up to the crappy Twilight rip-off Howling film they did called Howling Reborn Yes, it talks about them all. This is a great one to have. This is a great wear of movie. It has some great features. It uh, ports over everything from the MGM release and adds more right on top of that. Just a great release. If it would have had more original uh, features in, on it, it would have been higher on my list. Next up is one that uh, ties for uh, seventh place. <clears throat> and that is Psycho 2, Psycho 3. Released at the same time. Love this set of uh, some of those slasher films to the uh, classic Hitchcock film. Of course, Hitchcock's films are classic. These are classics in their own right in a very different way. Very cool films. Early Jeff Fahey in this. Meg Tilly looks gorgeous in Psycho 2. Uh, the, the ending is incredible for, uh, well, for both of them. These are just really fun films. You can tell that they're having fun making them, especially in Psycho 3. Psycho 3 is a more cheesy one, the more 
not as well liked by some people and but you know what it's a hell of a lot of fun you can tell that anthony perkins had a great time the commentaries on these are worth it alone these are incredible commentaries tom holland does a great job in his commentary and uh charles edward pogues does a great job in his these are great next up is number six and that would be <clears throat> The Fog. Yes, I am a John Carpenter fan, and I love this movie. It is a great little a kind of a ghost storyish type of thing. It has a cool old style feel to it. Uh, there's some great actors. The features on this are phenomenal. It has an incredible picture. I really love the box art. It really captures the film. I love the fact that the uh, you know you get the original art on the inside as well with these collector's editions. You did a great job on this one here. The Fog is a fantastic film. If you haven't seen it, you really should. We've got Carpenter. We've got Jamie Lee Curtis back in this one. We've got Adrian Barbeau in this. We have John Houseman from Paper Chase. We have um, oh God, Janet Lee shows up in this one here working with, well, working with her daughter. It's just incredible. That was number six, I think. Number five is one of my favorites. Love this, and this has some of the best features on any of the Criterions. Criterions, whoa, that was last night. On any of the Scream Factories, and that is Phantasm 2. Everybody that watches my channel for any length of time knows that I'm a huge fan of the Phantasm series. Don Coscarelli can do no wrong with these movies for me. This is a great one, even though they had to recast the lead role. Um, and uh, But you know what? James the Gross does work in this role, and it is a great film. There, uh, When you look on the back, it looks like there's just a couple features on there. Put the disc in, you realize, holy crap, they've loaded this thing full of features. Some incredible stuff. I watched and rewatched the features on this movie, as well as the movie, like three or four times now since I've gotten it. Great film, great stuff. You even get to see Angus Scream, who plays the tall man as Abraham Lincoln. And I didn't feature out on this one here. It's an incredible film. It's an incredible package, and it belongs in your collection. If you've got Scream Factory and you don't have this one in your Scream Factory collection, why not? Number four <clears throat> is From Beyond. From Beyond is one of my favorite H.P. Lovecraft films. Uh, we get to see Jeffrey Coombs in this one, doing great work. Ted Sorrell, of course. We get to see Ken Foray. And, of course, we get to see my favorite 80s crush, Barbara Crampton. And not only do we get to see her, we get to see her in a leather dominatrix outfit. Score one for Aaron watching this film. It is a great film. Uh, it's an amazing story. From Beyond has some incredible features on it. I loved listening to the behind-the-scenes stuff on this one here. How a guy almost lost his hand, his finger type of thing. It's just a really cool, cool movie. I can't stress enough. Stuart Gordon did incredible on this. I was not big on the box art originally, but it's, it's grown on me. And I actually kind of like it better than this one here, which is kind of a spoilers type of thing. The movie poses some great uh, some great questions. I really love the way this is done. It's one of my favorite H.P. Lovecrafts. Right up there with Reanimator, I love From Beyond. This is a great one. It belongs to everybody's collection. If you're collecting Scream Factory, trust me, when you, when you uh, watch the features on this one, you will thank me. Number three. And that is a classic slasher film. One that I'm sure is going to be in everybody's list. And you just saw it, didn't you? You just peeked when I put it up there. Just about for a second. You shouldn't do that. But anyway, it is The Burning. Oh, man, this is a great film. This is an amazing slasher film. This one came out around the same time as a Friday the 13th Part 2. Some people consider this a Friday the 13th uh, kind of a knockoff thing. And maybe in a way it is. But you know what? It did a much better job than the movie that was being made at the same time. And guess what? Savani was, was doing the effects on this. Savani's doing some incredible work on this. And this has a great cast as well. Uh, this movie here has a... Uh, see if I can get him. I gotta, I'm going to cheat by looking under the back of the box because I'm not going to remember everybody that's in here. we got Fisher Stevens in this one. we got Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. You know what? He's actually really a cool guy in this one. You never think of there's be a time and like, hey, man, I wouldn't mind being Jason Alexander. This is the time. Uh... Some great stuff. Holly Hunter is in this movie. Yes, the girl from the piano is in this film. Oh, yeah, I know, the piano sucked. But anyway, this is a really good movie. Yes, what? Forget the piano. Watch this movie instead. You're going to get to see Holly Hunter 
in a quality film. Just a great film. A lot of the features were ported over from the uh, MGM release from earlier. But you know what? Didn't mind. I was finally getting to see the burning in Blu-ray the way that it should be shown with the great cover. Love this cover art. See this original cover art from before? A lot of people like this. See? I think that, you know, if, if you don't really see this, this hedge things, clippers up there, it looks kind of like a harlequin. It just does. Number two. Day of the Dead. My personal favorite George Romero film in the entire Dead series. Re recently, Blu-ray Anonymous asked me if I was going to do the uh, Dead films kind of on my uh, series of rewatchability factor. And I may watch the other Dead films. You know what? I haven't seen the last couple of Dead films. Because, yeah, if you've seen them, you know why. But I'm going to go watch them. I'm going to put my shirt through that paint so that I can do that uh, video down the road. But here, here's my favorite of the Dead films. A lot of people love Don the Dead. And Don the Dead is a great movie. I have it. I have a movie about Don the Dead. I have a documentary on Don of the Dead. I just love that film. But something about Day of the Dead I just love. If you know, I've got Bob himself. i got the uh, action figure here. Incredible job they did on that. This is an incredible film. It has a documentary on, at, on this one, a 90 minute documentary on the making of Day of the Dead. You pretty much get everybody that was that's still alive today that was in Day of the Dead in this documentary. It is incredible. It has a great picture. This is the way you want to see this film. This is the Day of the Dead release that you want. There's no other release here that even touches this one. Yes, I know Arrow did one. It's really good, but it's not as good as this. Just look at that. See that? Those features. But, uh, incredible movie, incredible movie, incredible movie. You gotta see this one here. But what's my top one? You all, you all know it, because you know what my top, one of my top DVD releases, Blu-ray releases of 2013 was, if you're watching my videos. So you probably know what my top Screen Factory Blu-ray release of 2013 is. And, um, uh, I hope you've got this in your collection, or you're looking at getting it in there, because you really should have it, and that is... The Vincent Price Collection. I've talked about this one so much, I'm not going to talk a lot about it right now. I'm just going to say this has six Vincent Price movies on Blu-ray. The best way you can ever see them. With some of the greatest features you can imagine. Some incredible commentaries from before. Everything from the MGM was reported over, like I said before. But they didn't skimp there. They just kept putting other stuff on here. The PBS intros and outros that he filmed for each for uh, five of these films. When, when they were being shown in the 1980s. They're there as well. Talking with the guy that was there with him when he was making those, uh, making those uh, extra pieces, he, they get to talk to him. You get an hour-long fireside chat with Vincent Price in his career. You get a 47-minute interview with Victoria Price on, on her life with her with her father. You get a great 24-page booklet. You got six of Vincent Price's greatest films that he has ever made. You get this incredible snazzy-looking set. It is an amazing set that everybody should own. I hope this thing was on your Christmas tree or your stocking or whatever or, or it's on your birthday wish list. Everybody should have it. Great film. The Vincent Price Collection. That is my top 10 Scream Factory films of 2013. And there's so many more coming out. I mean to talk about them. But you know what? I really don't have a lot of time left on this video. But I'm just going to say that of 2013, I still want the horror show. I still want to grab, to grab up the uh, movie Body Bags. I still want to grab up Movies like The Beast Within. Just some classic stuff. But 2014's got Night of the Demons. It has Witchboard. It has Dark Man. It has Cat People. Ah, Annette O'Toole in Blu-ray. Yes, it has uh, many, many great things. We've got Ginger Snaps, Dog Soldiers, Phantom of the Paradise. So much great stuff coming from Screen Factory. Thanks for watching. My throat is going right now. And it is time for tea.